This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Let's talk to him, shall we? The guy I was sitting next to in Gainesville, Florida, as Arkansas got a huge overtime victory for the first time ever in the swamp. Tom, I don't think that's what a lot of people expected. What stood out in the Razorbacks' win this past Saturday? Hey, good morning, guys. Always a pleasure. Um, You know, I got that sense last week. I don't know if it was catching the spirit that Sam Pittman was exuding, uh, but you could just kind of feel that he he – sensed it and he said the players were you know buying into all that of course you never know till you see the product and by gosh they uh you could just tell from the drive, first drive they go down and score they had some nice plays called to uh to ty washington and i think tesla had a big catch on that first drive and they throw the touchdown to green and no a lot of people didn't see it coming but i did i did pick it in our our section last week and i don't know i just felt it and um and think about this. We're this close to discussing another questionable officiating deal. And if the guy makes the field goal, uh, Trey Smack, if he makes the field goal, they lose. Ugh. And and we're here talking about, well, that should have been a fumble that Braxton caused. The guy was still moving and so on and so forth. But instead, we're talking about all the, the good things they did. Yeah, that would be, ugh. Tom, can you imagine our post-game show if that had occurred and he made that field goal and the just volatility from this fan base, especially what happened in 2009 against Florida, I'm glad we didn't have to go there because I think I would have been as uh, as angry as it gets. But a lot of positive things, again, like you're talking about takeaway. Here's what I want to know. So you lose your right tackle that game. Doesn't sound like Patrick Kudis is coming back anytime soon. Ty Washington with that dislocated shoulder looks like he's out. And, I mean, Andrew Armstrong was lifeless at that point. So I I can't see him coming back for Saturday. How does this team take the positive momentum, but then also couple that with all these important players that aren't going to be suiting up against the Tigers? Well, there's this intangible thing, and that's what Sam Pittman has referenced a few times in terms of losing spirit and enthusiasm and having players perform better than what they might even really be. Um, Kudis has a high ankle, so they're not sure. It, he doesn't look as good. But I think Andrew Armstrong is, is going to be able to play. Um, Sam called it a headache yesterday. So maybe he didn't even have to go into concussion protocols. Um, but the way he landed didn't look good. And, and by gosh, he almost caught that, that pass. And so I just feel like um, they've basically, what you'd say, banded together. Um, the defense has really kind of been there. And, and what's weird in this game is they get that late uh, touchdown by KJ. I was heading to the field at this point when they converted the third down on his scramble, and then Satania caught a few passes, and then KJ went for 25. They take the lead, okay, it's late in the game. Lo and behold, the defense gives up a very fast touchdown drive, and then, you know, Florida gets back in the field goal position. But the offense has their back, and they go down and kick a tying field goal. <laughs> That included penalties. So, I mean, they were overcoming. The things they were overcoming were were pretty amazing in that game. Tom Murphy with us on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. I know you asked Coach about this yesterday, and you did some research over the weekend on the um, on the substitution penalty at the end by Florida that sure. did not result in a in a runoff. Coach was hoping the game was over there. What you know. Walk us through that because I know, uh, you know, yesterday coach said that it appeared that they administrated most of that right. Yeah, I don't want to get too far, you know, get too far in the weeds here. But had let's just say Florida had run those dudes out, come back, and then they got them off the field, okay, and then they are about to run that spike play, but somebody jumps off sides. That would have been a runoff because then the clock would have been, mm-hmm. you know, in a running position. But because those guys ran on and then ran off, uh, the clock is um, is not qu- quote you know it's, it's not, not running. It's not ready for play it's, at that point. Yeah. It, thank you, Tom. It's not ready for play. But Sam Pittman's argument was that the substitution rule should have been applied. But here's the thing: it was so chaotic, you can't just assume that every guy who came on the field with the special teams. I think there were 19 guys on the field uh, came back off. And so if, sub- if Florida had substituted at all, then Arkansas would have, should have been granted substitution rule protections. Um, however, I was given a, cited uh, an example 
when TCU ran its kicking unit onto the field against Baylor, because it's just a straight out swap, you know, um, a hurried field goal situation, the substitution rule would not have applied, and Baylor would have had to run run its guys out there uh, without extra time. And, and Sam Pittman was saying you, you're supposed to get three seconds to see what personnel you want to change, and then they run out there. And so I'm I'm not sure. It's a little fuzzy to me whether the substitution rule should have been applied on that play or not. Yeah. Uh, Tom Murphy with us here, Arkansas Democrat Gazette on uh, the McClarty Daniel Hotline. When you look ahead to this week, can Arkansas sustain this running game? They found a little bit of it with Rocket. They'll have DeBinion back. Um, it, it, have they found the running mm-hmm. game, or was this, um, or was what we saw Saturday maybe um, just the return of Rocket? What, what do you think about <laughs> s- Saturday and Auburn, and can Arkansas get, say, 200-plus on the ground as a team? Well, I, I think the way they're feeling about themselves that they feel like they can. Um, I would prefer not to see, have to see KJ run as much as he did, but by gosh, it looked like he was liking it. And I was standing on the sideline, right down there, and you know, and on that side of the field in overtime, when he bowled over that safety and got eight extra yards after contact. And this is after a couple of arm arm tackle dudes, including the four hundred and twenty five pounder. Mm-hmm. He ran through his arm like a turnstile. And then he got hit, and he, and and when he got up, you could see he was feeling it. And then Rocket really should have been dropped in the backfield on the next play, but he kept his balance and got 11 yards out of it and was fighting. And I'm like, they're about to win this game, and they won it on the next play. That plant pass to Broden was thrown where only he could catch it, and it was a uh, it was unbelievable. And you could just see the emotion that poured out of those guys after all these weeks they've been through with close losses. Um, and yeah, I do believe that they feel like they have their mojo now. The, the, the meshes in the backfield were a little faster. The, the linemen held their blocks a little bit more. K.J. ran through more arm tackles, and, or, and so did Rocket Sanders. Uh, I'd like to see A.J. and Dubinion back in the mix a little bit too, but, yeah, they, they might have themselves a formula with Kenny Guyton that they can sustain till the end of the season. Finally getting the monkey off the back, getting that win, you know, re- you know, getting the ship pointed in the right direction. Is there more value in doing that on the road, in your opinion, when it seems like you're going against the world, then you got the the, the locker room together there, you get the plane ride home. Do you, can you make a case there's more value in winning a game like that on the road versus if you'd have done that at home? Yeah, I would say it's hard to assess, but I, there's great value in what they did. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there, people got the videos of Kenny Guyton and KJ chest bumping, and they're just like screaming. And everybody down there was so excited. Jamie Pittman got in on the fun. Um, yeah, I mean, you you did that in a place that the, your program has never won before. Uh, granted, it's not a vintage Florida team, but they fought and they had weapons and and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, the thing is, you just wish now that they had say beaten BYU or mm-hmm. gotten one of those road wins that at LSU or Ole Miss or somewhere along the way, mm-hmm. um, and then they would have a easier route to bowl eligibility. It's going to be tough. You know, Auburn's going to be tough on Saturday, and Missouri's going to be tough at the end of the year. But I do think they showed that when you got the right formula of, you know, the, the will and the spirit and all that, it can lead to good things. And, um, uh, yeah, I would say there was a, a ton of value and carryover effect in what they did on Saturday. Tom Murphy's with us on the McCarty Daniel Hotline, writer for Whole Hog Sports and the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Tom, speaking of guys that were feeling it, Dwight McLaughlin, and uh, he was on all over the field this past Saturday. I heard him say at one point that uh, he, at, even at LSU, he never wanted to lose to Florida. Looks like that that could potentially end up being fruition, seeing the Gators aren't on the Arkansas schedule anytime soon. What did you think about him and kind of the comments leading up to the game and what Coach Pittman said about him following the game. Well, he, he revealed one thing yesterday that had not been in the previous weeks because if you guys pay attention to all the press conferences, we've been asking him each week, what's going on with McLaughlin? You know, he was a healthy scratch in, in the last game against Mississippi State. Okay, mm-hmm. what does that mean? You know, why? Well, it had to do with practicing harder. And you could tell that game meant something to him. The the way he came up and tackled behind the line of scrimmage, like that's fighting through a block and then cutting a guy out from his, you know, his, at his ankles on a couple of those plays. And sometimes if the block holds and the guy gets momentum, those can go for touchdowns. 
but it was a two yard loss and he, he was great in coverage. Um, and what that does is it gives them the ability to move snacks to, to mm-hmm. the hog position. Hudson Clark could play more safety because you saw Florida exploited a little bit when he was in nickel, when they ran the motions and got guys to the edges and he's having to run through traffic. Hudson Clark is, and they got an early touchdown out of that. So it just helps the whole all around deal. And you can see that, that McGothern's, um, his uh, top side, you know, his high end is is pretty high, and it, it, he was motivated on Saturday. And to that point, Tom, when you look on the other side, and mm-hmm. you kind of mentioned some moving snacks around a little bit, uh, Jalen Braxton, I mean, we can't say enough about this kid. This is a true freshman that is making plays consistently throughout games. Uh, when's the last time you think an Arkansas corner has had this much <laughs> impact as a, as a young player like Jalen? Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? I mean, I I can't just off the top of my head say, well, it was this guy, you know, a Jarrell Norton or somebody back in the day or Ahmad Carroll. But you could just tell um, he he's his father is a coach and he's into the game and he's a very well spoken kid. I hope we actually talk to him today in our interviews. But he got the one legit touchdown. But that other one, I would argue that Trey um, Wilson was still moving when the ball got raked out and Al Walcott got on it. So just a heck of a performance. He did miss a tackle on that three play touchdown yeah. drive. Uh, but you know, otherwise I think he probably graded out pretty well. And he was just, he was a dog out there. Yeah. Basketball team wins by 34 last night, scoring 93 points battle off the bench leads the way with 21. Uh, is this what you expected? I mean, what was your thoughts on the game last night? Pretty much. Yeah. What I expected, uh, a lot of Duncan, some good three-point shooting. Um, it looks like Mush really got deep into his bench because um, it's important when you got a team of, of this caliber to make everybody kind of assured in what their roles are going to be and not have any discontent on the bench. But uh, Musselman has shown that he's a- capable of doing that. So uh, they took care of business, and they dispatched the Grambling with uh, pretty pretty good ease. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.